Oh, testing, testing. Is Dr. Sudha here? Dr. Sudha, are you? Oh, I.
Uh, can you bring, help me bring the mics to... Uh, maybe just three... One, two, three. I'll uh, bring you three of them up and then I'll keep two of them. Testing, testing. Okay, then can you pass to the speakers? Yeah, Testing. Uh, now it's uh, on, so if you need to. Testing. Hello. Recording in progress. So good morning. Um, today we'll start our um, APRIGF program. 
uh, with uh, a discussion on the problems that are faced by disability uh, students in higher education. So as we all know, pandemic has got, uh, uh, it has changed almost all the way the uh, uh, different organizations work and it has also affected most of the students and uh, the most affected were the students with disability and uh, during the uh, discussions and analysis we have gone through as teachers we all from the academia and uh, disability management uh, group and uh, we face a lot of problems though we have a lot of assistive tools there are some restrictions there are some uh, problems handling those uh, uh, tools teaching the children uh, though their children are normal children we had problems uh, teaching even the normal children but the most affected part is the students with the disability and how they cope up with the higher education system uh, so today for the panel discussion myself dr sudha i am from the academia and I'm an associate professor, and I'm coming from India. And I have Dr. Nirosha. She is also a professor from uh, uh, Sri Lanka. And Ms. Manik, who is uh, from the disability management. And Dr. Nyana Jairaman, who has joined us online, he is also a professor from India. So we have Nirosha and Manik from Sri Lanka. Now I'll just start, start with uh, Dr. Nirosha. Thank you, Dr. Sudha, for your kind introduction. So um, when we concern about the uh, disability and the higher education sector, we know in the pandemic, we were faced a lot of problems. Uh, it was suddenly in 2019. Uh, so we faced a lot of difficulties, even not only the differently able community, most of the other students in the higher education sector also face the difficulties specifically because most of the contents are not prepared according to access for them and also uh, they have already faced with some sort of uh, uh, accessibility issues specifically most of the uh, students uh, the content and everything's are not prepared according to the accessible level for example like the people who are having visual impairment so uh, for example like uh, if we are uh, uh, seeing a picture so picture descriptions and all these things are not uh, properly uh, presented in an accessible manner uh, and also for the uh, people who are having other difficulties uh, like uh, hearing impairment uh, so they do they are not having uh, such assistive tools are not support for the content so therefore we uh, in uh, with the pandemic we have to consider and the, in the policy level and when we concern about the uh, these people we have to think on when we are creating the contents what sort of things that we have to look at for uh, these type of specific groups and also uh, there is a uh, connectivity issues as well because uh, there are some students from the far away from the remote areas uh, and also uh, mo almost all the people are getting online so before that most of them are not get online and uh, they 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 are having uh, on-site education so when they are going to online education most of the people are having access to wi-fi so Wi-Fi connectivity and the most of them, are, when we consider about the Sri Lankan context, many people, even not in the rural areas, most of the urban areas also, uh, they are very difficult to get the Wi-Fi access and some of the uh, infrastructure are not satisfied to uh, go all the people online because the uh, connect, connect, we are faced with a lot of connectivity issues. So, uh, and also uh, we, we have already faced with uh, content accessibility uh, in when they are using the con contents. So therefore, um, I think not only Sri Lanka, all the uh, region all over the world have changed and we have to consider on uh, what sort of accessibility needs that we have to consider when we preparing documents and also uh, connectivity issues uh, and uh, how we are going to support this specific uh, group of people. Uh, thank you. 
Yeah, thank you, Nirosha. As you said, uh, uh, as a teacher, when there was a sudden uh, change from the normal uh, classroom lectures and other things into an online environment, we uh, really had a lot of issues. Uh, so the students were not ready to get adapted to the new system. Even the staff were not ready to uh, use the uh, new system. And they found it very difficult because uh, the contents were not ready for an online uh, presentation. So, uh, and uh, teacher, if it's a computer science teacher or a teacher who knows computer science better, then they could manage, but about the teachers who are handling other subjects like languages and other things, um, they were uh, they felt it very difficult. And the older people had uh, to adapt to this new uh, teaching technique, uh, and there was a uh, sort of uh, uh, what to say. Um, the students were not, uh, uh, though they are online, the presence of the students were not felt. We felt that we are in a uh, dumb, uh, we were talking to a dumb machine because there is no response from the other side of the students. And uh, they actually, they just switch on the system, they just roam them out, they uh, go to the movie, they go to the theater, they don't, I, they don't actually uh, attend the classes. So uh, we just give them attendance. We have to give attendance, we have to, we don't have any system to monitor if they are present, if they are attentive to the classes. We keep on asking, we keep on lecturing. The one whole hour was only for interaction. Well, there's no interaction, sorry, it's not for interaction. It was only a one-way communication. So it was very difficult for us to adapt to this teaching environment. More than a year, uh, this was actually the situation, though we have a lot of tools, we are not used to those tools and we are not exposed to those tools. So that is one uh, great difficulty that everybody faced uh, during this pandemic. Now uh, over to Ms. Manik. Uh, so from her side, uh, she is going to discuss like what all the problems uh, they faced uh, when they give a uh, teaching course or when they undertake a teaching course on the higher education part? Uh, yes, uh, uh, because due to the pandemic, everything changed, especially for students with disabilities when it's come to higher education, they had to face a lot of barriers and difficulties. Uh, I must say from the Employers Federation of Ceylon Specialized Training and Disability Resource Center, a uh, long time ago, maybe four or five years ago, we started these online trainings and e-learning uh, trainings. Especially uh, train these students on online facilities, how to access various software, uh, various platforms. Uh, the, we never thought that there will be a pandemic like this, but uh, be, because of people with disabilities, they have transportation difficulties, no accommodation in uh, urban areas because people with disabilities come from the very grassroots level. Due to various other factors, uh, it was easy uh, for online training. So we developed the e-learning facilities. This was useful when the pandemic came. The difficulties that we face, because when it's come to higher education, uh, most of these uh, students, they had, uh, especially when you start with uh, vision impaired persons, right? Uh, most of the, some of these vision impaired persons did not have the devices, the softwares, the smartphones. <coughs> and also, they didn't know the technology, how to use the uh, computers and the uh, smartphones. That is no uh, lack of uh, training in uh, devices and lack of devices as well. Because these devices are very expensive when it's come to vision impaired persons. So I always, you know, the universities should always consider providing these devices for university students, maybe at a subsidized rate or have a mechanism because there's one university who gave all the uh, students with disabilities who gave everyone uh, taps so that after they uh, complete the degree they have to return these taps or maybe the laptops because that sounds good because the, the four three or four years they are in the university they will be using and then return it to the next generation so those things were useful because they were able to access the training because the online lectures were there. So the vision impaired persons, uh, they had difficulties they had were, you know, the learning management system, LMS, 
and the web, university websites were not accessible, especially the LMS, because uh, the students were asked to uh, submit assignments, examinations through the LMS. So, uh, but there was a one a positive thing was most of these universities upgraded their websites or the LMS uh, system uh, according to uh, international web accessibility standards. It was much better now what it was uh, before the pandemic. And also the lecturers, most of the lecturers did not have an understanding what the accessible formats are. So for easy uh, use, what the lecturers does was, they take a printout, they scan it, and uh, either scan PDF, they put it upload into the LMS, or they send all the notes in scan PDF format. So scan PDF and JPG cannot be read by the screen reader. So therefore, it was difficult for the vision impaired persons to uh, access these uh, training materials. And also now say when you are in the hostel, when, 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 the, when the physical lectures are taking place, when you are in the hostels or any other place, uh, students with disabilities get the support of students with non-disabilities. Uh, there were people to uh, read and they record notes or type short notes. But due to the pandemic, they were isolated. They were confined to their homes and in the uh, rural areas. So they did not have any family support uh, to get these things read. And also with the technology. If, they are, if the students with disabilities with other students, you know, they each other uh, help uh, to, get the, to get these uh, services. But when you are isolated, when you are at home, the family support is not there. The other family members, they do not know the technology, how to use it. So the difficulties were there. And also, the, from the very grassroots level, we have the data connectivity were not there. Sometimes the students with disabilities had to maybe climb trees or wait on the road to get a proper signal or the data connectivity. And also, they were the severe lockdown situation. They didn't have a way of uh, because in Sri Lanka, most of these students with disabilities, uh, they used to put data card and get the data connectivity. To go out and buy these data cards was not possible because there was a severe lockdown for several months. So then it was difficult to access these online facilities because maybe online transferring money, online banking system is also not available. So it was very difficult for them. And also uh, the low vision students with disabilities. It was difficult because they could not uh, do the screen magnifier because the lectures, even for student, vision impaired students, totally blind students, the lecturers have the PowerPoint on the screen. Uh, where the, uh, Then our screen reader does not read what is on the screen, right? So therefore we were suggesting the lecturers to give the note before the lecture so that they can read it through their screen reading software in their device, either the smartphone or the laptop. But uh, these things did, since these things did not happen, you know, it was difficult because what is on the screen, uh, a vision impaired person, the screen reader does not read. And when it's come to hearing impaired students, you know, because of wearing of masks, there are hearing impaired students who are doing lip reading. So the lip movements, cannot be seen. So, and also some most of these lecturers, when it comes to online lectures, they do not switch on the video uh, because of various reasons, data connectivity, the machine gets slow. So because of that, they could have read, the lip reading cannot be done, and also facial expressions, and sign language support was not there. So they were here, the hearing impaired students with disabilities were marginalized because they couldn't attend uh, these lectures. Sometimes what the lecturers does was they do the lecture and upload the recording. The audio recording is not accessible for hearing impaired person. So what they had to do was get the audio recording, get the support of somebody and write notes. So where are they going to get that support? The budding system is not there, family support is not there. 
and also the uh, students with physical disabilities maybe especially for wheelchair users sometimes uh, when well, people other disabilities they can go here and there and uh, get uh, you know station in a place where there is data connectivity but a wheelchair user they have to go on the road right and get uh, get station where there is data connectivity to attend to the lecture so it's not easy it was difficult for students with diverse disabilities and also uh, the economic crisis was also there uh, due to uh, various reasons so the cost was high due to the data connectivity and the devices so students with disabilities they had to face a lot of this. Sometimes there is uh, lecturers, you know, they used to ask these students, write the, uh, maybe the assignment or the examination, write it, take a photo and upload it. But for a vision impaired person, how can you do that? And also if the person is a braille user, even when you, up, you cannot take a photo and upload it, right? So that's why uh, mostly uh, sometimes the word format were not accepted. So uh, they had to get special permission for students with disabilities to access all this information. Thank you, Monique. As you said, um, the data connectivity was another big challenge um, and the affordability. So the, if, even if you get the connectivity, what about the affordability part? Could all people afford because most of the disabled students they actually get some sort of a funding and they undergo their training and learning and other things so all the fundings actually were stopped and people were turned home and they were sent home because we couldn't accommodate them in the hostels and other things and they don't have access to the data connectivity and they need to pay a heavy amount to get the data connected and the uh, countries are like Sri Lanka or India, uh, the affordability was a big question again. Yep, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, next we have Dr. Jnana Jairaman, he is joining online, he will be talking on the difficulty part faced by the faculty members. Dr. Jnana Jairaman. Hello, uh, good morning, uh, thank you for your introduction. Uh, can I hear you on my voice? Yeah, uh, can you switch Hello. on your uh, camera, please? Yeah, I did not switch on. Can you see my face? My camera is switched on. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Nyan I'm from the Russian Academy from the Russian Academy. This is a great opportunity to help you. Dr. Nyan, you our... have some disturbance. We couldn't hear you properly. And now, okay? Yeah, now better. I have to think about something in the 2019 and 2020 and 2021. We have faced a lot of difficulties as like the pandemic time. We have taken the classes and the everything in India as a faculty member. We have faced a lot of things because the lack of resources, the lack of students' ability, the students are properly taken on the examination and as well as they never taken the uh, something the roads, uh, something about the present checking. As a faculty member, we have how to teach, how to encourage, how to present, uh, how to absorb the students for uh, content. I suppose uh, I'm an engineering student, uh, so engineering university. I can teach the engineering subject. It's a very difficult to do in the class because we have uh, just a library liberate content. Something we have useful for the laboratory and the lab uh, experiments and the something particles we are not able to do that. Now, Zoom and the records they will be given for live capturing apps. Before that, uh, we are having the same thing, same technology, and the app 
apps are in here. Some place they are not even that much ready to uh, taking for the all captions facility. And then we have very much difficult to do test the students and the making them for every industry ability area, industry 4.0 level participation of the students. We are troubling with the students with the equipment. Finally, we have to 2019 and 2020 and 2021, the batches started graduating with the writing exam system the meeting of the technology for engineers. But the but the reality they have to be not hearing or not able to do the research experience. We are not able to get in the way good engineers as well as we are out of the pandemic area. We have to collect, collect the students for the six months to get the students. We have to see to the, some of the unit concepts not in the full uh, three years. So we can make it for the six months to get the class courses. But the, the three years of the faculties, we are not having the assignments of the property. We are not getting the assignments of the property, not getting the students in the environment of uh, their studies and their education. And then we have some uh, urban areas at the metropolitan area have all the uh, curriculum and all the facilities will be there. But the uh, remote area and uh, some of the villages and semi urban areas, we are not getting the such much connectivity. We have the uh, disability uh, about the lack of uh, technology as well as the connections to we have about that our technology is not technology perspectives. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Gyana Jairaman, and Hi. sorry for the audio disturbances. Uh, I think he's uh, traveling. I'll just summarize like what he was about to say. Um, so due to this pandemic, uh, 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 the science students uh, had a lot of problem, a lot of issue. So we couldn't take them to the lab. We cannot give them a hands-on experience to work on the software or the devices, whichever is available in the laboratory. And we have to, uh, if it's a computer science student, we depend on open sources, OK? Something we could make it. But uh, coming to the engineering part, the engineering students, the engineering lab, uh, the robotics lab, all those things has to happen online. It was very, very, very uh, difficult for us to uh, uh, to help the students out uh, to have a practical exposure or practical uh, knowledge or a practical touch on these uh, things. So it was very, uh, and even the staffs have to learn the new things, uh, how we can uh, teach them what we could and what best we could give on our side. Uh, as a teacher, um, so the most affected part. And uh, normally, uh, we have students going for a project or an internship for the past, last six months of their course of study. So they go to the company, they work with the company people, they learn uh, what is the company, the teamwork, the coordination, the actual working environment. So everything was actually missed out. So they just stayed back, and that was actually a dump report which was submitted as an internship report or a project report without any practical exposure. And that was all a cut, copy, paste from the internet. So these are some of the problems. Uh, and the faculty, it was very difficult, but the faculty were asked to pass all the students. So we couldn't grade them accordingly. So the proper grading was not given to the students. So these are some of the difficulties that was actually faced from the staff side. Um, so following this discussion, there are some other uh, things which has to be uh, considered. Uh, when you talk about higher education of the disabled student, uh, the first thing, as we know, like more than 50% of the world population, uh, we have people uh, with uh, disability. Uh, the disability can be a vision disability, uh, the speech disability, or the uh, physical disability, any disabilities. Now, more than 15% of the world's population has got disability. Now, uh, the uh, critical questions or um, the critical part is uh, though we have adapted to technology slowly not completely it is only a slow growth uh, what about the 
funding pro uh, opportunities for these uh, disabled students. So that's one major question. So when uh, we made a thorough study about the various uh, students and their uh, uh, disabled students and their study oriented uh, studies, uh, the funding was a great question, a big question, because there was no proper funding available, even if you want to get an assistive tool, they were universities which are helping out uh, to come out with learning uh, management systems and other things, but still, um, a funding proper funding is not available. That is one uh, major part uh, every uh, community has to face and the other one the privacy. So we are online. Um, we use everything uh, through the system. What about the privacy of our data? So the privacy part is still um, a question or an area to be researched and how we can give a better solution to this. And the third thing, IT is not centralized. So IT management is not centralized. And when IT is not centralized, then disparity happens. So everywhere we have disparities. So uh, this disparity couldn't be avoided, but to some extent we need to try how this disparity could be balanced. So that's a major thing, um, uh, the problems what actually we face and the uh, uh, compliance to the web, uh, web management, uh, disabled uh, students, how they may access the web. So the government websites, they give full support to the disabled students, but do the private sector offer that? So this is also a major uh, issue. Uh, so these are the uh, things which has to be considered, which has to be given some sort of a balance. So though, though we cannot give a complete solution for all these things, but some balance could be given so to improve the uh, quality of education that is offered to disabled students. Because uh, um, recently I, I had my um, uh, maid servant, uh, she had a child who is disabled and that child was studying in a school which offers them uh, accommodation, food, everything free of course. And, uh, but due to uh, pandemic, the child was sent home to be with the parent. Um, so uh, that maid servant, um, she just try, uh, works every day for her daily uh, food and other things. And she could not help with the uh, connectivity uh, or the online management system or learning portal or whatever it is. And she just comes to my home and brings the child and she says, uh, Madam, uh, we'll let, let the child sit here. Uh, you have a network connectivity. Let me sit along with the child. Can you help her? You're a teacher. Can you help her? But I, I couldn't uh, completely help her because I, I'm a normal, I, I just teach a normal student. And I tell the uh, child, you do like this, do like that, but he couldn't make a, uh, I mean, he couldn't cope up with me. Mm -hmm. So there I felt, oh, this is a major problem. See, uh, they don't have food, and how can they go for a network connectivity paying so, such a heavy amount? Um, so everyday food itself is a problem and how this could be uh, satisfied. Uh, that is one uh, issue which, um, uh, which made me feel, though I am a teacher, I couldn't make certain things. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't just tell, her, tell him the basic things, these, these things you have to do, but I couldn't make, the, make out or I couldn't bring the child into a proper uh, shape. And uh, these disabled students, many students, they need the touch and feel of a uh, teacher. So online environment did not provide that, that touch and feel of a teacher because they see how the teacher speaks. Now the people, those who cannot uh, talk or have uh, speaking disabilities, uh, they have to see us talking. Even if uh, we have a small child at home, the child uh, uh, starts learning, uh, I mean, uh, starts speaking, seeing us, seeing the lip movements. So those type of things was a real problem and the touch and feel was also missing. Um, so uh, that's about uh, the problems that we have in the higher education part with the disability students. Uh, now the forum is open for question and answers. Hello, I'm Leticia from the Solomon Islands. I, I just have one question probably for the panelists. Um, it would be interesting because um, we had someone share on um, family support. It would be interesting to know why the lack of family support. 
Um, what could be some, some, uh, some suggestions on how to engage to get family support? Because um, it's vital, vital to get this support from home, especially in a pandemic. So just your suggestions or thoughts around how we could get uh, families more engaged family support in, during this time. Yes, I'll answer that question. Uh, people with disabilities, anyway, it's a lockdown situation uh, throughout our lives. But when the whole world is in a lockdown situation, we are double lockdown, right? That's what happened during the pandemic. So getting the family support, first you have to change the attitudes because even family members, maybe parents, uh, they might have a child with a disability, but they, uh, they will have other uh, children as well. So most of these family members, you know, they think it's always, you know, they get more, more support for children with non-disabilities, right? So there are the, the or maybe the parents, there are also other factors as well. For example, during the lockdown situation, when the child with a disability is at home, maybe the mother cannot go for work, right? She has to look after the child, maybe child with a severe disability, right? So those things were there. So there should be to get the family support, as I told you before, with the technology and like Dr. Sudha said, they don't have any support. First, there should be a government mechanism, right? to have either have support centers to support these uh, children and students with disabilities, right? Or have another mechanism to have an income generation activities or gen income generating uh, method to support uh, parents of children with disabilities. Both are equally important. First, you have to actually change attitude. Changing mindset is very important and also train them, you know, if the, if uh, in most of these countries, especially in developing countries like Sri Lanka, we don't have parent counseling, right? We always suggest uh, that to have a help desk at the hospital. So because when a, maybe a child with a, when a parent get a child with a disability, right? First thing is the hospital or maybe due to an accident or some other reason, uh, a person uh, acquires a disability. Most of these people do not know what to do, where to get the support. Even uh, uh, pa uh, pa a par um, the parents, if they get a child with a disability, they don't know how to educate this child, what to do. So it's very important that you have a help desk at every hospital. So that uh, if you, uh, you know, uh, you know the, uh, the hospital or the Ministry of Health, they can recruit a person with a disability for that help desk because they have more, uh, they are more sensitized on disability and they are more aware on this. So they can provide all this information for parents and people who acquire disabilities maybe later on in life, which is very important because when Parents get a child with a disability, first thing is they have to go to a pediatrician, the doctors. But the doctors are not specialized in the disability field. So this help desk must have somebody who have specialized in disability. So there are so many um, people who are employed, people with disabilities who are employed in the government sector in the main city, and there are university graduates, uh, graduates with disabilities. So you can make use of these people to recruit and have this help desk, which will be very useful for anybody. Because first thing when you acquire disability, the first place that anybody goes is the hospital. If you don't get the proper guidance from the hospital, then you're lost. So thereafter, only all these help desks can have information and leaflets of various organizations doing various things, the policies, the rights of people with disabilities, so that the people, parents as well as people with disabilities can be aware of. Yeah, thank you, Monique. Do you have any other questions? Thanks. Uh, many thanks for the very interesting uh, session. 
Uh, my name is Abdul Hamid uh, from Jordan. I have a question for all. Do you think we have, uh, we have to invest more in fourth uh, industrial revolution technology in order to make technology uh, more inclusive for the people with, with disability? The fourth industrial revolution is uh, very much uh, fo focusing uh, on interconnectivity and real-time data and machine, machine learning and uh, many smart devices and Internet of Things. Many thanks. Yes, uh, in technology is getting advanced and people uh, actually there is a part that you people with non-disabilities have a very key role to play. All the technologies, devices, platforms should be accessible for people with disabilities. Make it according to the W3CAG standards so that it can be accessed. Because we as people with disabilities are part of you. So you all see and do things. We hear and do the same thing as a vision impaired person. Or maybe a hearing impaired person, you all hear people with non-disabilities, you all hear and do things. People with hearing impairment, either they have to do with sign language or through text-based ones. So, web developers, software developers, app developers, everybody in the technology field should make all these platforms and softwares and assistive devices accessible. And also there should be a mechanism because our devices, especially designed for people with disabilities, are very expensive. There should be a government mechanism to provide these uh, devices either free of cost or uh, as a subsidized rate. Because you as people who could see, if you want to write something, you can just take a pen and a paper and write it. But for a vision impaired person, either you must have a bracelet or any other device uh, to write. And also for hearing impaired persons, there should be sign language interpretation. Otherwise, there is a very big communication gap. So these technologies, uh, technology is good because it assists people with disabilities like us to work equally capable as you do, right? It's the technology that assists us. We are training people with disabilities, especially to be equally capable as people with non-disabilities through using softwares and various other assistive devices. So make them accessible and also uh, you know, it's uh, make it inclusive, make it a meaningful inclusion, right? For example, now all these new phones, smartphones, maybe iOS or Android. In the phone itself, the inbuilt, uh, I, in iOS, the voiceover is there. In Android system, the talkback or the voice assistance is there. The only thing you have to do is activate it, right? And uh, when it's come to all these banking systems, uh, the ATM machines, and you know, the ATM machines, most of these ATM machines, according to international standards, this voice software is built in. But when it's come to the country and when it's, they are used, they have deactivated it, most of these banks. So there, there, you should, there should be a proper mechanism, you know, standards, guidelines, to have this uh, technology to be used by everyone. You never know who you uh, when you will uh, become a person with a disability. For example, I am not a person who was a born blind person. I became vision impaired in my late twenties, right? So, uh, that I know the difference in the sighted society and, the, and now uh, the way I am living. So that's why it's very important. The thing is people don't think about it. Have these mechanisms, have these uh, accessibility features inbuilt to the system so that whoever wants, for example, uh, for a low vision people, person uh, accessing a website, if uh, he or she wants a color contrast because for low vision person is the background with white letters for, for, for some people white 
background with black letters, whatever. So is, there should be a mechanism to adjust, increase the font size, zoom it, and then read it. Have those systems built in built, so whoever wants it can activate and use the device or the technology which is already there, used by other people as well. Well, thank you for the talk. And um, th I'm w waiting home from Taiwan. And I'm interested in terms of connectivity. Since in Taiwan, we're also facing the period of pandemic. Some children, they don't have the connectivity in terms of internet. And our government provides, they can have a contract with the carrier to provide free SIM card for those children. And I think in that case, the government pr play a role to lower the price. So they have a lot of SIM cards with the, to buy them, buy those SIM cards from the carrier. So the price could be lower than usual. So I'm wondering whether there are any kind of this mechanism from your speakers, countries that the government do the same job like this, or it, there's no such a financial or um, help from the government. Thank you. In Sri Lanka, of course, we don't have very good initiative in Thailand. We have discussed with uh, several uh, telecom agencies and government as well, but still we are uh, advocating and lobbying for that, we have not succeeded. And also, the data cost is very high for hearing impaired persons. Because we, vision impaired persons and other people, they can um, uh, manage with the voice calls. But for hearing impaired persons, they need the video call for sign language interpretation. So the data cost is very high for them. At least to give a, at a subsidized rate, or there should be a, some mechanism. I'm very happy about Thailand, the mechanism that you all have. Uh, we will also try to implement this. And we have done several discussions, but uh, we have not succeeded in Sri Lanka. In India, um, the, the government has supported people uh, giving laptop, free laptops to students, those who cannot afford to buy laptops. But coming to the data connectivity, there is no such system um, uh, giving a data connectivity and subsidized uh, rate. They need to go for data connectivity and their personal uh, funds. That's a situation. Now, they are actually provided with some mobile devices and laptop, those who cannot afford to buy it. Um, but the cost comparatively is okay, but not uh, affordable by the lower grade uh, people again. Hello, good morning. I'm James from the Philippines. So my, I, we know that uh, even before pandemic, we already experienced uh, digital uh, problems in terms of digital accessibility and connectivity. And it was further heightened during pandemic. I just want to know if, uh, I know pandemic hit any country, uh, even here, even in Southeast Asia. I just want to know how can we further uh, encourage our government sector and at the same time the private sector to invest to the technology that addresses the said concern. So given that uh, technology is quite costly, in, uh, on, especially on that matter. If I answer that question, yes, there should be a proper uh, from the government, government mechanism and involve private sector as well. Uh, so if they, um, to have a proper mechanism, that's because even in Sri Lanka, most of these places, they don't have the data connectivity, invest on uh, all these new technologies, connectivity, uh, still in Sri Lanka, of course, we are facing a lot of difficulty in uh, connectivity. So actually, there should be a proper government mechanism to have this connectivity because after the pandemic with the pandemic you know the usage of online and connectivity increases so and also 
um, um, increase in the facilities does not mean that increase in prices of data connectivity is also there so if it can be given at a subsidized rate so you know very much appreciated all these mechanisms should come from policy level involve not only the government sector involve private sector as well and come at policy level and also just placing laws and policies will not do proper monitoring mechanism and proper implementation should also be there i i agree with manik so uh, specifically in the government level so we there should be a kind of a, a proper uh, framework right so the, for all the governments not only not only this uh, world level right world level there should be a proper mechanisms to identify this uh, whole problem like we talk about the connectivity inclusiveness right so accessibility for all these things i think there should be a proper framework to identify what sort of uh, problems they are facing identify and categorize them into different sectors and we should have a proper mechanisms to how to overcome these problems i think uh, that concerns we have to think about in a global level so then then after we can take it into the we can absorb those things into the country level and then we can implement those things and as manik said there should be proper mechanisms to monitor check whether the things are happening properly thank you and also at uh, you know like uh, forums like this so because we are discussing all this connectivity where all this queries should go to the government so representation from government level at these forums are important because then they will identify uh, their key role what their role is when it's come to internet data connectivity and other mechanisms so in india uh, we have a lot of industrialists uh, those who actually support out of uh, their interest they just uh, support people with data connectivity and other things but uh, as you said the government has to come in it has to come in it has to step in and there should be a proper policy around the world uh, so maybe this forum we can as a community we can also put a representation so the governments take it up and they just give some solution to these uh, uh, sort of uh, issues. Any other questions? Anything else you people want to add on? Okay, um, thanks a lot uh, for all your um, ideas and your queries uh, so i think we have to work together uh, so that the internet becomes inclusive trust and for affordability for and mainly for the disabled uh, people uh, we need to make a representation to our governments we need to have some framework as uh, dr nirosha said uh, towards the government helping us all uh, with the support for the disabled students thank you